Interrompemos esse podcast para uma notícia imperdível. Cidade de Deus. A luta não para. Assista a nova série da Max com estreia dia 25 de agosto. Produzida por Fernando Meirelles, baseada no filme. Mas com uma nova história sobre o tráfico, a milícia, corrupção e resistência na favela. Imperdível mesmo. Saiba mais em max.com. Dona do Lar, eu sou dona de mim. Se eu nasci para casar, não, eu nasci para brilhar. Este é o lembrete de L'Oréal Paris para que você nunca se esqueça do seu próprio valor. Porque a sua história é valiosa. Porque você vale muito. I went with her man. He ordered the material. We got it. It got delivered two days later. He went and dug the holes for the poles. And when we got there, she came out saying, I don't want this crap. Take it back. This is the plaintiff, Audrey Martinez. She says she and her neighbor, the defendant, agreed to split the cost of a new fence between their properties. And now the louse is reneging on their deal. That's right. He still owes her $1,749. And she's here suing him in this court because she wants her money. This is the defendant Richard Aguilar. He says he agreed to share the cost of a vinyl fence with his neighbor, but she turned around and put up a block wall, which was way more expensive, and he can't afford the cost. The plaintiff broke their deal. He paid her for a vinyl fence, and if anyone's owed money today, it's not the plaintiff. He's accused of going back on a deal. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $2,000 because she used an unlicensed fence installer, and his side looks horrible. All parties, please use your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum. The People's Court. The People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Williams is presiding. Let against have been sworn, Yana. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Martinez, <coughs> you are suing your neighbor, Mr. Aguilar, for $1,749. You say he still owes you to make up his half of a fence that was put in. Tell me what happened. How long have you guys been neighbors? I've lived there for 11 years. And how about him? 12. 12? Uh, so when you moved in, he was already there? Yes. And there was a, what kind of fence was there before? A block. A block fence. All right, so what happens? So I was talking to one of my friends, and I was telling him that I wanted to replace the wall. Because? Because it was cracked, and it, okay. was, it was already old. Okay. I'm sure it was there long before we got there. Right. So he overheard my conversation, apparently, because the Because your conversation's taking place in the backyard? Correct. Okay. Because he came over to my home the next day, and he, with an invoice in hand for a block wall, and said that he overheard my conversation with my friend and that he would be willing to go half with me to replace the block wall. And how much was that invoice? 11,500. 11, so what did you say? So I said, okay, let me get an, an estimate and then we can move forward. Okay. So I did get an estimate. It was for $5,800 without the footing for a block wall. He agreed. So we proceeded with um, moving forward with the block. Where physically is this? Um, it separates our backyards. So is it right on the property line? Yes. Okay. Who is it that you hired to do the fence? I hired somebody. His name is Jose. Okay. Let's call him Jose. Did he meet Jose? Yes. Okay. So he's going to do the demo work. And what happens? Um, well, the inspector came out um, because I had permits. So the inspector came out to look at the footing. Um, it did not meet the, today's standards. So, so you did have to get a footing. We had to do the so footing. So now the fence was going to be how much? Um, at least, he said at least 2,500, depending on how much he, it would cost for the, he would get a truck to pour the cement. 2,500 more. At, so at now least. it was going to be a total of what? Nine. Nine thousand. Yes. So what does he say when that happens? He says, well, I can't, I can't afford it because my daughter's getting married. 
All right, so then what happens? When do people decide, let's try to put in a, a vinyl strap next day. chain link fence? Who decides that, together? Okay. Well, he came to my home and he said, I can't afford it, can we get a vinyl? And I said, okay, because we have no, fo no fence at all at this point. All right, so then what happens? He goes to Home Depot with your guy? No, he ordered it online. Okay, and then what happens? He ordered the wrong size. Okay. So then he accuses the guy of um, hacking his account and changing the order. Okay. So it gets, so that's, you know, this happens. Sometimes it's the wrong product. So Home Depot's down the block, return it and put in the right product. But that's not what happens. What happens is you decide that you want the concrete one. Well, I wanted what we originally had agreed to. Right. Because but, I But in between vinyl. that, you had agreed to something else. And because he said, I can't afford now what we agreed to. I agreed to 5,800, but now you're telling me I got to pony up another 2,500 at least, which in the end turned out to be more than that, right? Correct. It turned out of the $5,800 quote turned into a $10,000 quote, very much like the original that you say he had, which I'm going to ask you about in a second. All right, so then you tell the guy just put in concrete, and what does he say about you just putting in concrete? I told the guy to return the stuff to the Home Depot because instead of him paying his half of the 58, he was going to get the supplies because he gets a discount at Home Depot. So the guy returned all of the stuff and got the store credit and then bought the supplies for the block wall with Oh, that so same. that store credit that he that's under his name got used for this fence. Correct. Right. So how much money are you into for this fence right now? 2900. That's the original estimate. Okay. You got materials and no, then No. Go ahead. I went with her man. He ordered the material. We got it, it got delivered two days later. He went and dug the holes for the pulse. And when it got there, she came out saying, I don't want this crap, Take So it was back. there anything wrong with it? Was it the wrong no. size or it, no? Uh, he didn't tell me, he ordered it, I don't know. I, I'm not a contractor, I mean, right. I, I don't put up fences. How did he order it on your account? He was next to me, he told the guy at Home Depot what he wanted, how he wanted, where he wanted to deliver. So you did go to Home Depot with the fence yes, building. And I brought out my credit card and paid it right okay. there. That's all I did. Okay. So he ordered it. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Is that what you mean when you say he was saying that the guy hacked his account? He says no, he was it, at, there with him. I was not aware of that. that okay. He, so he ordered it, and then when it comes, she says it's the wrong stuff, and you're saying that's not true, Judge. She just didn't like it. No, I, I went out there. I was talking to Jose, and then she came coming out saying, I don't want this crap. Get it out of here. I want a block wall, and I want it up ASAP. And I told her, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. I'm retired. I'm, I got to pay for my daughter's wedding, and you want more money. I can't afford it. And then what does she say? Put it up. I want it up ASAP. <laughs> All right. And then did you two ever talk again or no? No. Okay. That's interesting. That, All right. that did not By happen. the way, did you ever walk up to her with a quote for 11000 No, I just told her. That you have been getting quotes for 11000 I, I got one quote from a contractor, a licensed contractor, for 11000 Now, you have, speaking of that, you have a counterclaim against her for $2,000. And what is that for? That's for uh, getting a contractor without a license. Um, Are we talking about Jose again? Yes. Uh, How do you know Jose is unlicensed? Because uh, on his estimate here, he has a, a license and it belongs to somebody else. Okay. And so when did you bother to look up Jose's license, before or after she sued you? I looked it up after, yeah. So was it, but all those times that you're with Jose and the two of you are bonding at Home Depot, mm -hmm. and are, do you ever say, dude, you got a license or no? No, I- It wasn't important to you until she's suing you for the no, rest of the money. I figured it out. So you want $1,000 because Jose's unlicensed, but then money's owed for an unprofessional job. I want to talk to you about that. Why okay. are you saying that? This is a laminated fence that we wanted originally. Right. That she didn't want. We, we did not want that originally. You agreed to it. No, but, that, no, but you know, he's more, don't talk to each other. He is more right about that than you are. He is more right about you having agreed, okay, let's just do the fence. And then when you see it, you're like, I don't want this, or you're, it's taking too long. Whichever it is you say, it Both. doesn't matter. Both. It doesn't matter. You're, you know, you, you, it's your yard. You want it to look the way you want it to right. look. I don't begrudge you that. Right. I begrudge you coming into court and demanding that he pay a part that he didn't agree to. That's the part. Let me see the pictures that you are complaining complaining about that you say, show me that on your side it's not right. I, can you look up at the screen? That's the wall now. Yeah. What's wrong with this wall? Well, if you look very closely, the, the lines on there aren't to sp standard specs. Is it against code or anything? Well, if you look at this picture here I have, Your Honor, you could tell. 
The rest of them what are is right this? Here. 42 years ago. What does that mean? That, that fence was put up 42 years ago. That's up to standard. See the lines on the fence? They're all even. I mean, this one section does appear to be a little messy, and I don't know whether that's something that you can fix that. I don't know. I have the signed papers from the city where it met all of the three inspections. Yeah, I know. They looked know. on her side, not mine. You are always free to call the city and say, on my side, it wasn't done according to code. And then if you are correct, they will make her, at her expense, bring the guy back can and I, fix... Can I still do that? Sure. Okay, I will. You could do that tonight. Right. Or today. Excuse In fact, me. Let, me, let me wrap it up so you can do it right now. <laughs> but I have two issues in front of me, her claim and your claim. Let's talk about your claim. When you come to court, yes. you come to court to enforce a legal obligation another person has. There is no world where he agreed to pay $9,000. He just didn't. Okay. And so he shelled out exactly what he said he would shell out, and he doesn't need to shell out anymore. Now, on your counterclaim against her, $1,000 for an unprofessional job, you would have to show me, other than that, you know, in a close-up, yes, this looks a little messy, it should have been cleaned up better, which might be able to be solved in five minutes, I don't know. Um, that's, but you would have to show me that there's something about it that it makes it unprofessional, like it's not up to code. You haven't been able to show me that. You're telling me you never called them to come on your side. Call them to come on your side. So I'm dismissing that part without prejudice to you. But the second part, which is, amount owed to me for an unlicensed fence guy. I always find it fascinating that everybody's all into whether somebody's licensed after everything hits the fan. It's never before because nobody really cares if the handyman is putting up the fence. You know, nobody's demanding, you know, uh, the licenses. Now, in this case, it's a little bit different because according to you, his estimate has an actual license number on that. Did you ever go back to your, to uh, Cement Jose and ask him what the heck's this about? I did not. Really? Even though it's it, he alleged it and he counterclaimed against you and it's coming to court? You never asked Jose, Jose, what's the deal? You don't have a license? N no, because I got the owner permit, not as a contractor, so I didn't... Yeah, but his I, allegation is no, that the person held themselves out to have a license that they right. didn't have because they have paperwork that claims they have a license. Right. No, I did not. Okay, but how would you be $1,000 damaged for that? Just because this is messy doesn't mean that it was done not according to code and it has to be knocked down. You have to be able to show me either by putting on professional testimony that says this is not according to code or showing me that she got cited I could for call this. call you my contractor right now. What is your contractor going to say? It's, it's a poor job. Yeah, he is. Yeah, but it, it doesn't take $1,000 to fix that. You and I both know that. All right, I come from a, from a contracting family. And what do you do for a living? I work in construction. Right, I could just tell. So you and I both know that's not $1,000 to fix, right? In fact, you could probably fix it one day with a beer in your hand, but you don't have to. You're right that you don't have to. All right, on her lawsuit against you, zero. But on your lawsuit against her, also zero. And you are free, of course, to call the county or the city and complain that it's not according to code on your side. Thank you. So the plaintiff did not prevail in this case. She's on her way out of the courtroom now. Let's see what Ms. Martinez has to say about it. What do you think? I think that he should have done what he originally said he would do and pay half of the block wall. He yeah, didn't but even pay half of it. You've learned a lesson then, I assume. Yes, don't do business with him. All right, I hope the fence helps, okay? Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Aguilar, he's the defendant. He's on his way out of the courtroom right now. I, I'm sure you feel relieved you don't have to pay anything more, but you learned a lesson too, didn't you? Yes. What'd you learn? <laughs> learned not to do business with that woman. Boy, you both feel the same way. You know, the judge said if you're not happy with the fence, you could go back to the city and complain. And I'm going to do that. Do it? I'm going to do you that. Are. All right, yes. well, good luck to you. I just hope, I hope you can keep the peace between the two of you. How about that? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Good luck to you. All, All right. right. Thank you very much. All right, Harvey, another neighborly dispute. So, Doug, we've talked about this a lot in the People's Court. If you have a common fence on a property line, both sides have to repair it, maintain it, and sometimes build a new one. But there is a point where if one person decides to spend way more than was agreed upon either in the past or present, then that person is going to have to absorb the extra cost. I own a townhome in a gated community that's surrounded by a brick wall. An existing utility pole was upgraded on the street side but adjacent to my back wall. The new equipment on the pole has damaged my patio furniture by dripping some kind of fluid and rust. Who is on the hook for damages here? 
Well, assuming you can prove what you just said, it right. sounds like she's in a gated community and there's a homeowners association mm -hmm. probably for right. the townhouse and that the upgraded light fixture was upgraded by the homeowners association. Yeah, that's probably a good so, assumption. Um, right. but, I, but she'd have to be able to prove what she's saying, that right. that's what corroded her patio But furniture. you know what, she could just take photos of it and maybe some video of the stuff dripping. It yeah, I mean, that's, simple, that's right? really good evidence if right. that exists. Right, um, right. But, um, you know, sometimes that's not, you look up and you say, well, that's gotta be it, and right. it, that may not be it, it may be something else, but if right. she can see rust if you can, if you have the pictures and you can prove it, you right. absolutely present that so, to the homeowners association. Right. So they have the insurance okay. for those matters. They do, and they and, they and you're paying the insurance up. policy for the That's for that right. insurance. Yeah, they'll probably stand behind her, and you know, they may have that problem with every light all the way around yeah. the property. <laughs> Interrompemos esse podcast para uma notícia imperdível. Cidade de Deus. A luta não para. Assista a nova série da Max com estreia dia 25 de agosto. Produzida por Fernando Meirelles, baseada no filme. Mas com uma nova história sobre o tráfico, a milícia, corrupção e resistência na favela. Imperdível mesmo. Saiba mais em max.com. This is the plaintiff, Gabriel Albanese. He says the defendant gave him two cats and then stole one of them back off the street and she won't return her. That's right, Tipsy is his cat. His kids love Tipsy. And he's suing this heartless scoundrel for the return of his cat or $500, which is just a number to him. These are the defendants, Barbara Rochelle and Tim Brinson. Barbara claims she didn't steal her own cat. How could she steal her own cat? Tipsy is theirs and always has been. Shame on the plaintiff for letting his kids get close to Tipsy and for claiming her as his. They're accused of cat nabbing. The defendants have filed a countersuit for $5,000 for emotional distress. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiff says the defendants gave him two cats and then turned around and stole one of them back. But the defendants say Tipsy is their cat and always was and always will be. It's the case of, I'm feeling a little tipsy. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Your Honor. All right, let's start with you, Mr. Albanese. What's going on? <clears throat> um, okay, um... I'll, I'll make this as brief as I could possibly make it. Um, so I live in a duplex. At some point, uh, Tim and Barbara move in, and they get a couple of kittens at some point. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. It's pretty chaotic over there, but whatever. They eventually uh, get me to um, cat sit for them. And uh, I go over there, and I'm feeding them and stuff. Uh, but it's the first time I'd really been inside their house, and it's um, uh, really filthy. Uh, their uh, food bowl... The cat's food bowl, Tipsy and Trouble's food, food bowl, and their litter box are um, full of roaches, would be an understatement, <clears throat> like German cockroaches. And I noticed that the cats have fleas really bad. They're scratching a whole bunch. They're uh, scratching their ears so much that they're sometimes bloody, especially Tipsy. Um, then the cats get to, we do what we can. We buy ear mite medicine. Who's and, we? Who's um, we? Uh, well, first, myself and my children. And then later, the neighborhood sort of took up taking care of the cats because it was clear that uh, Tim and Barb couldn't or wouldn't. So then at, at some point, I'll, I'll say that uh, it seems like their home life is getting less stable and more chaotic. What did you see that made you draw that conclusion? Uh, well, uh, they called the cops on each other all the time. Okay. Uh, like maybe once a week, and then one of them would OD and leave in an ambulance maybe once a week. Okay. Uh, and then at some point, uh, my friends, uh, Cliff and Catherine move in right next door. And at this point, so much chaos is going on in the other side of the duplex that Tipsy, uh, it, Trouble had already started living with us the vast majority of the time and it was fine with them. They said so. Wait, I'm uh, sorry. Backtrack. Trouble started living yes. with you. How does that happen? That, that I realize this is probably an outdoor, indoor cat, but you're just yes. saying Trouble just starts coming around your place a lot more and staying there? Yes. Like, in other words, yes. you would let Trouble into your home? Yes. And did you do that with Trouble and Tipsy from the beginning? Yes. Okay. All right, go on. And did they know? Okay. <clears throat> yes. Okay, go on. Um, 
but it seemed like they always kind of uh, uh, liked Tipsy more. Uh, so they eventually they gave me trouble. And who I, gave I'm, you trouble? Which one of them? Uh, I would say both of them, but uh, who did for you talk sure, to? I, re I remember Tim explicitly saying that I could just have trouble, but okay. both of them said so. Okay. Um, at that point, like I said, things are pretty chaotic, and uh, my friends Cliff and Catherine move in next door. Tipsy starts uh, spending a lot of time uh, over at their house. Okay, now Tipsy is the other cat, and that's the cat in question in this lawsuit. Yes. All right, yes. Tipsy starts spending time at uh, the new neighbors who are friends of yours yes. on the other side of yes. you. And? Uh, may maybe it would be better if, if Cliff tells you sure. this. Sure, let me hear from Cliff. Person. Sure. Okay, all right. Hello. Uh, hi. hi. Okay, can you raise your right hand, you. please? Yes, ma'am. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you, sir. Okay, what is your name, sir? Uh, my name is Clifton Genthon. Okay, and tell me what you know about Tipsy and what's going on here. Okay, um, so Tim and Barb, you know, they had their lifestyle and everything. I don't want to speak to that. Um, the cat was neglected quite a bit. Uh, they would leave the door open, I guess, and sh she would get food somehow. Um, some people in the neighborhood would do it. They would disappear for days, sometimes weeks, and they wouldn't make arrangements for people to take care of the kitten. Uh, she just was in really bad shape. Um, the cat would be outside, it'd be below freezing temperatures, it'd be raining, you know, it was really hard to watch. Uh, my wife has cats, she has two cats, um, and she, you know, gives her cats treats, so we would see Tipsy, and, you know, she was just emaciated, covered in fleas, mange, and that's kind of hard for like a short-haired cat to have matted fur. That's how bad it was. Uh, around uh, spring of 2020, um, my wife and I were outside in the yard doing yard work and uh, Tim was sitting on his porch and we were talking about Tipsy and he asked us, he said, um, do you want to know how she got the name Tipsy? And we were like, okay, sure. And he said that they used to feed her um, white Russians when she was a kitten and uh, she really liked it. And uh, so that's why they call her Tipsy. So that was troubling. Um, it's, I guess I'm no expert, but I think that's like okay. animal cruelty. Do you take over Tipsy or does your neighbor take over Tipsy or what happens here? So this is what happens. Our cats don't get along with Tipsy. So okay. at a certain point, Barb had moved out and a friend of theirs was coming to get her stuff. Okay. Uh, and, uh, Barb, can I ask, uh, Ms. Uh, Rochelle, can I ask you, do you remember what month and year you moved out? Um, August of 21. All right, so she had moved out, and, and what else? Go ahead, sir. Okay, so um, the, a friend of theirs was coming to get her mobility scooter. I, uh, I had helped his friend jump his truck before, so I had seen him before. I was going out to my car to get something. I saw him. He motioned me over. He was wondering if I could help him load up the mobility scooter. I said, sure. Um, so I was helping him with that. Uh, Barb was on the phone, and uh, she said, let me talk to the neighbor. So he hands me the phone. She's saying, I'm moving out. Um, you guys can have the cat. So that's uh, about the time where he started taking care of, uh, of Tipsy full time. Okay, now let me started talk to him again, please. Thank you. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, so Mr. Albanese, if I understand correctly then, uh, in August of 2021, Ms. Rochelle moves out and tells you that you can, or tells your neighbor that you can keep Tipsy. So now you would yes. have custody of both Tipsy and Trouble at that point, is that correct? Yes. Since yes. August of 21. All right, when does Tim get back into the picture? And where was Tim, Tim when, she, when, when Barbara moves out, where's Tim? I believe that Tim was in rehab at the time. Okay, so when do you next, so then you think they're both gone at that point, and when is the next time that something happens of relevance? Tim moves in with that same person that was helping move the scooter, Dusty. When, Tim, do you remember when you moved in with that person? Is it Dusty? Yeah, September, middle of September. Okay, so you move okay. in with Dusty, and uh, how do you know Dusty, Mr. Albanese? Uh, I've just seen him around hanging okay. with Okay, uh, so what happens next? Now it's September of 2021, he's living with Dusty, uh, uh, Ms. Rochelle is gone somewhere else, you've got both cats, and what's the next thing that happens? Um, so Tim uh, steals the cat the first time and takes it over to Dusty's house. When did that happen? Um, I mean, was it in September when he... Yeah, it wouldn't have been very long after that. Okay, yeah. so it's... Okay, and then what's the next thing of relevance that happens? 
So then Tim goes back to jail. At the when same does time, Tim, okay, stop. Oh. When did that happen? Uh, um, no, actually, I, I have I'm, a different question sure. that's burning in my head. Did that not cause you some concern? Yeah, I, I never got along with him. He's got like an Aryan Brotherhood tattoo. I don't like him. We never got along. Okay, all right. Um, when he goes back to j jail, you get tipsy back how? Uh, Dusty's son brought me the cat. When? Um, I'd have to say maybe early October. I'm okay. guessing, I'm sorry. So but, October yeah. 2021, you get the cat back, and the cat yes. is with you until when? Uh, May the 8th of 2022. All right, and what happens on May the 8th? Uh, Tipsy doesn't show up for a meal, which is highly unusual. Uh, How old are your children, by the way? They're uh, now 14 and 15. Okay. And... Uh, so we make homemade cat food made out of um, uh, tilapia fish and all kinds of stuff. And she always shows up on time for a meal. She didn't show up. We were worried. Uh, we put out flyers with a hundred dollar reward. We had the the entire neighborhood knows this cat and like make sure this cat's okay. Uh, so we uh, er we're like everybody look for Tipsy. And so everyone's uh, you know basically turning everything upside down in their backyards, thinking she might have got stuck somewhere. And we feel really sad. My kids are super sad. We think she's dead. Um, and then I get a text with a picture of Tipsy and I'm like, my God, someone found her. And then evidently it was Tim and Barbara, uh, telling me they had the cat, which they, like, they could have just gotten away with taking the cat, but they had to rub it in my face. So now here we are. What was it yeah. they were saying? Uh, they were like, oh, sure is a nice cat or, uh, or like, um, do you have the text? I, I do. Okay. Can you? Read a few of them and tell me so I can get a flavor? Yes. Okay, while you're looking, I'm going to speak to Ms. Rochelle. Ms. Rochelle, um, when did you and Mr. Brinson get the two cats? They, oh gosh. Was it Mr. Brinson, do you remember when you got them? Uh, not exactly, ma'am. Uh, I think it was somewhere around May, April or May of um, 2020. 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somewhere around there, I believe. And is it accurate that you guys gave trouble to uh, Mr. Brinson pretty quickly after that? Um, no, trouble, both of them were back and forth. Uh, trouble was more interested in staying over there. And uh, we were cool with it. We, we lived next door to each other. So Right, but I'm not asking whether you let trouble stay there. I'm saying, did you give trouble to him? Oh, did you say trouble's yours? I, 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 told, I told him he could, he could keep trouble if he wanted to. Keep trouble. That's what I wanted to establish. So now we're talking yeah, about yeah. Tipsy. And, uh, it, you know, he describes a situation where the life was pretty chaotic for having pets, um, that the police were there a lot, that, you know, ambulances were there a lot to take people who had overdosed. What's the... I wanted to give you a chance to respond to that. There, there was a few times where it was a little bit chaotic over there, but uh, we've always made sure we take care of our animals. Well, I got two people saying the animals were full of, of mites, that they weren't spayed and neutered, and that they were emaciated. That's not true? No, okay. no ma'am. So now no, let's talk about Tipsy, all right? Um, shortly after you move in with Dusty, you get in trouble, correct? Yeah, yeah. And that's in what, the... like October? Yes. So when do you get out of custody after you got in a trouble? A month later. All right, so it's November. So in November, you, of course, see that your cat's not there, figure out what Dusty did, and you go over to uh, the old neighborhood and, and look for your cat, right? No. Yes, ma'am. In it, November, it you do that? No, ma'am, no, ma'am. No, ma and no. you don't do it in December either, right? No, no ma'am, no. I did not and know what January, happened to her. And then January, well, well, we can all pretty much guess what happened to her, right? She's probably going to go back to the old neighborhood since that's where she's lived for years. Did you ask Dusty, where's my cat? Yes, ma'am. And what did Dusty say? I don't know what happened to her. All right, when do you figure her. out that the cat went to the old neighborhood? I didn't figure it out. I just I, so I seven to be months later, you happen to be driving by the old neighborhood and you see your cat. Yes, ma'am. All right. So tell me what you did in seven months to find your cat. Did you ever put posters out or call the 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 place where because Cat One Hundred and One is they're gonna go to the last place they live because they don't know the new place. All right. So did you ever contact Mr. Albanese and say, "Where's the cat? Did the cat go over there? I'm desperately looking for my cat." No, I couldn't talk to him. 
And I, I was intimidated to go back to the place anyway because they, they pretty well, you much weren't run too, me okay. out. But like in May, on May 8th, you were back there doing what? Um, I had to come to town for something. I happened to be riding by, and it was like right off the corner. I said, pull by there and see if I see my cat real quick. And sure enough, she's sitting at the bottom of the steps. And then you took her. And where's the cat yes, now? Yes, Where's the cat now? Right here. Right here with me. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Who did you think was taking care of her all of that time? I do believe she was at Dusty's at that time. I don't think so, because I don't think him. Dusty wanted her. All right, so now so now the cat has been with them for eight months, but you see it on the street and you nab it, and then now it's with you for the last two months. Have I got it right? Yeah, I guess so. Right. So he is asking me to do one of two things. He's asking me to either award him monetary damages because you stole his cat or return the cat. What say you to that? I say that I've had that cat since I was a kitten, and I was in detox. You at the were time. never a kitten. The cat was a kitten. The cat was a kitten. Right. The cat was a kitten. I'm right. sorry. Right. Why was the cat named Tipsy? Because my girlfriend at the time, she would drink white Russians and she'd set them on the floor in a glass. And one night, we seen the cat come over there and was drinking out the cup. So mm -hmm. as a joke, we just started calling her Tipsy. Okay. We wasn't feeding the cat alcohol. We were not giving the cat. Okay. Are you and your mom living together now? Um, yeah. Okay. Good uh, you have a $5,000 counterclaim against Mr. Albanese for what? Uh, emotional distress, because I didn't know where my cat was. Well, there is none so blind as he who will not see. What effort did you make to even find your cat? I asked. I asked around. Did you ask around where you used to live? Because that's where the cat's been always. No, ma'am. Okay. When do you and Tim start living together? In We're not really. He's just here temporarily. He's not really living with me now. So who has Tipsy, you or him? I do. All right. And did you tell him to pick her up? Well, yes, certainly. We, we knew that if we saw her again, we wouldn't get her. Uh, did it not occur to you that someone else had the cat for the last seven months and that maybe that was a problem? Well, I don't know exactly the time frame on all this because I left in August. Well, when you uh, left in August, did you take Tipsy with you? No. Right. No, and did you, in fact, tell the neighbor that Mr. Albanese could have Tipsy? No, I did not. You didn't. So the neighbor's lying. I never told him that anybody could have the cat because it was Tim's cat. Okay, well, then Trouble why? Okay, so cat. you left Tim's cat behind when you moved out, and Tim was where? In rehab? He, no, he was at the house when I left. All right. Folks, um, from I have, what's the emotional distress that you have gone through, Mr. Brinson? I realize the one you've wreaked on others. I don't understand. How is that $5,000 worth of emotional distress on you? I, I couldn't even put a number on it to begin with. But I can. It's because, I, 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 yeah, I know it's probably zero. Yeah, it but, is zero. Uh, so thank you for leading me there and not making me go through the math. Here's where my problem lies, Mr. Albanese. This is a cat that I believe, at the time that he takes it on May 8th, belongs to you guys. But it's also a cat that has now been there for, you know, another chunk of time. And I'm kind of uncomfortable about the idea of ordering that cat to be brought back to you. Let me hear from you on that topic. Plus, you um, and I both know it's an outdoor cat, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. So well, indoor, outdoor. Indoor, I mean, outdoor. She always sleeps inside. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I want to say that her sister lives with us and has a great life. It's a quiet street. Everyone knows her and loves her. She's well taken care of. We, we my my kid takes time out of her week every week to make handmade food for her. my kids. Love love her and play with her. Um, she's like, she's living an awesome life here. Um, and in fact, it's where she's spent the vast majority of her life. Uh, it's a place that feels the most familiar to her. Um, my children and my neighbors' uh, children of our, all, are all close to the cat. I, I, I don't even want the money. I would just like to be able to take care of the cat and for my kids to be around the cat. Ms. Rochelle? Yes, ma'am. Do you want to respond to what Mr. Albanese just said? Um. I mean, it's like a part of my family, you know, because we shared him. We shared the cats, and I told him I knew his daughters loved them. 
And that's why I sent him the picture because I didn't want them to worry about something happening. So that's why you sent the text? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you, if, did you if find the text? No. Yes. Did you find the text? Can you read it to me, Mr. Albanese? Yeah, I, I found Tim's part of the text. They were both texting me at the same time. Uh, he goes, hey, sorry your daughters are upset about Tipsy. Could have been different. Shouldn't have let them get attached. The cat could have been shared if you were decent. You should apologize to the girls. She's fine and you don't have the money to buy her. Didn't figure that you would reply. How cheats, liars, and narcissists usually deal with people, blah, blah, see you in court. I don't reply. Okay. Uh, lots of times in this kind of litigation, the parties think it's my job to decide where the cat has a better home. Um, Mr. Albanese, in my opinion, that cat has a better home with you. Not because you're better than them, but because your kids probably can spend a lot more time with this cat because the neighbors are also loving on the cat because the cat's sister or brother, whatever it is, uh, has been right because the cat has lived there uh, all of its life. For all the thousands of reasons that you said, I think that cat would be happier with you. But the happiness of the cat is not my concern. The only concern that I have is who was the owner of the cat and did someone take your cat? And I find that someone took your cat. I find that at that point, that cat was yours. Now, I have to decide what the remedy is that I'm gonna give you, okay? Because there are one of two remedies. One of them is I award you $500 and this case is over and the cat stays where it's been for the last couple of months with Ms. Rochelle, okay? The other one is I will give you an order that you can take to your local court saying that you folks have come in front of me at the people's court, which is binding rulings that you've both agreed to and that I find that that is your cat. That could take you months to enforce. Do you understand? Yes. So I am asking you, which remedy do you want? I, I, I just want the cat, please. I'm making a finding that the cat belonged to Mr. Albanese when Mr. Brinson took the cat seven months after the cat had not been in his possession. And I am finding that Mr. Albanese at that point was the owner of the cat because seven months had passed and no effort from what I see at all had been made by either Mr. Brinson or Ms. Rochelle to obtain the cat and that it was his property. And I'm issuing an order that Ms. Rochelle and Mr. Brinson return the cat to Mr. Albanese. That is my ruling. Thank you, Your Honor. We're going to take a break, and then Judge Millian will be in chambers with her husband, John. But before that, Doug's going to be in the hallway with the litigants. Stick around. Does someone owe you money and you can't get them to pay you back? Well, contact us at peoplescourt.com and hit submit your case. So in this amazing case of Tipsy the Cat and who gets to keep the cat, it's the plaintiff. Mr. Albanese gets to keep the cat. Let's talk to the defendant, to the defendants. Ms. Rochelle, what do you think about the judge's verdict? Well, given what she was given, I guess she has reason to feel the way that she feels about it. Uh, I don't quite feel that way. You know, the key question him. here is you're going to give the cat back. You're going to give the cat back. How about it? Nah. You're not going to give the cat back? That's my cat, man. All right. What about that, Mr. Albanese? The, the judge has said you get to keep the cat, but they say they're not going to give you the cat. Are you going to try and change the situation? I'll, I'll do whatever I have to do. Um, my kids are counting on me to do the right thing. I got to provide an example that you try to stand up for the right thing to do. Um, so I, I just have to push forward. All right. Well, you've gone this far. You've prevailed here. So good luck to you. Um, I think most people watching this would agree the cat probably would be better off with you. The judge certainly feels that way. So good luck to you, whatever you do. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Harvey? So, Doug, uh, FYI, most small claims courts around the country, the judges do not have the power to order the return of property. They're limited only for a money judgment, and that sometimes doesn't get back the pets you love. 
My dogs go through my glass front door because someone's cats are literally on the other side of my door, <laughs> on my porch. Can I sue the owner of the cats? Oh my goodness. Because your dog breaks your glass wind. First of all, I'm, I'm how, because we have a dog right. and we have a glass uh, doors right. and that dog hurls its body yeah. against that door. But that's impact glass. Okay, so this, glass. It's right. Super thick. I was going to say, what kind of glass is dogs, that, that? Dogs will go through a glass door. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's or a screen dangerous. door. Yeah, they'll do it. Big no, dogs I, will. A big dog will go through almost anything. Yeah, the answer, I think, is pretty much no, unless you live right. in one of those very rare jurisdictions where they say that cats, too, must be on leashes, right. which is kind of silly, because the only cat I've ever seen on a leash is my daughter Christy's cat right. when the cat is in they the mountains. Move, they don't move around much when you put them on a leash. They just kind of look at <laughs> you like, like, really? What? <laughs> Uh, help, right? So, uh, no, you probably can't. What do you think? No. Yeah, I think they're out of they're out of luck on this. Yeah.